Good morning everyone. It is 7.30 on a Saturday morning. I got up early today, I hopped on a train and I have come all the way out to Linlithgow to walk section 6 of the John Muir Way which stretches for 15 miles through to South Queens Ferry. Lots to see on this walk, lots of forest to walk through, some, some private estates with massive centuries old houses and castles. As with several stretches of the John Muir Way, there's always some main road that you have to negotiate. Fortunately, for the start of this one, um, it's only about a mile long before we were able to turn off and get into the quieter areas. So it's good to get this one out of the way right at the beginning and just enjoy the scenery going forwards. Oh man, he's going fast. Uh, this stretch of road actually reminds me of the stretch leading from Helensborough through to the uh, the gate picking up the John Muir Way that was a good two mile walk and felt endless. This has all those similarities. All right, here we go, making our way off of the main road and now into lots of green pastures. Get some peace and quiet. That's what this is all about at the end of the day. Well, at least I know for certain that I'm on the right path anyway and I'm heading in the right direction. That's always, always a comfort. And I spot another John Muir Way sign. This is what I'm talking about. Nice, quiet country paths. Right, so I've just walked you can see Linlithgow in the distance there. So I've just walked all the way along here. That's probably a good, good couple of miles. And now we make our first turning off to the left here. So we're starting to get into a different change of scenery now. Denied. More, more stretch of road. Okay, so we have reached uh, Bowmains Meadow Wildlife Reserve. Challenge accepted. Well, there is no bull. Maybe I'll put on my red bandana and see what happens. Perfect place to live. I have to say, you really can't fault the signage on the John Muir Way. It's very, very clear, very specific. Right, and we have reached the Keneal Estate, and I'm very pleased to see Lots of awesome woodland. Oh, this is awesome. All right, now we're talking lots of woodland. Crisp smell of oak bark. I sound like I know what I'm talking about. I don't. These might not even be oak trees for all I know. Do your research, Ian, honestly. This has been a particular highlight of the walk so far, so I'm hoping the rest of it matches up to this because I'm going to actually be quite sad to leave this woodland area. It's just, it's just so nice and quiet and haven't passed a single soul yet.
Right, and here we are at Watt's Cottage. The small workshop in front of you was built in 1768 so that James Watt could conduct his experiments to improve the design of steam engines in secret. I'm somewhat surprised to discover I've actually only been walking for about an hour and 40 minutes. It feels a lot longer. So I've been really enjoying myself as well, but I truthfully thought I'd been walking this for about two and a half hours. <laughs> well, all good things come to an end. We're back out in civilization. I do, however, see that we're taking a left now. Well, this isn't much fun. Lots of noisy traffic. Right, so 10 miles to our destination, 5 miles to Blackness Castle. So we're making good time given I've only been on the trail for about an hour and 45. That looks like Bowness up ahead. We're coming out here to the 4th, so we're going to get a nice uh, nice sea breeze in a minute, which is good because it's uh, getting quite toasty. About half past 9 and it's very, very, very warm. So I'm not actually sure what this is. It's not really a shelter because it has patterns in it and the rain could come through, but it's very, very unique designs. So I'm about three hours into this walk now and I've been thoroughly impressed actually. I've read some fairly mixed reviews about this trail, but I've, I've really, really liked it. I have to admit this stretch along the coast uh, does get a bit tedious after a while and it does go on for a little bit more. It's also been very hard to film because as you can see, the sun is right in my face. Much less fun this, much less fun. This, uh, as you'll see from the sign here, there's also, this also shares the cycle path. So uh, you do need to uh, keep your wits about you. Having your headphones on isn't necessarily the wisest decision I made earlier on as I nearly got mown down. So uh, careful as we go. Holy balls, it is hot. It is hot, hot, hot. It's about 10 o'clock. It should not be this hot for Scotland. I'm not a heat person at all. So I'm in some shade. And I'm enjoying it while I can because it's about to come to a very abrupt end. Also, I didn't put any sun lotion on. This project has been delivered with support from the Scottish Government, Sustrans, to encourage walking and cycling. Active travel benefits your health and the environment. Damn right it does. And 21 miles to Edinburgh. I will not be walking all that way. That'll be the next section of the John Muir Way, which I'll, I will be picking up at some point. That's it, guys. You take the easy way. Wow, this stretch really is never ending. Anyone want to buy a very, very rusty boat? I'm assuming that's a joke, right? As tempting as it was, I decided not to buy the big rusty boat. John Muir. And as he turns the corner, of course, it's more of the same. Now,
I'm gonna have to be really ignorant and think this is a tomato. I'm not gonna try one to find out, but I don't know. That's very, very unusual. If anyone knows what that is, leave a comment below. Just pique my curiosity. Very bizarre. All right, here we go. We're off that path, finally. Right, eight miles to Queen's Ferry, two to Blackness. Oh, so nice and cool now. Despite that last stretch being a bit of a slog, I have to say I do like the variety of this walk. You start off with uh, some little country roads and some little dirt tracks and you come out into the big wooded area and you head through a private estate with lots of history, come out onto the, onto the shore, follow that for a small eternity and then come back in, into some woodland. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes ahead. I know we've got Blackness Castle and then I believe it's more coastal walking. And South Queensferry is a very, very quaint village. So I'll show you some of that when we arrive. Right, so we are at Blackness Castle and I believe this dates back to about the 14th or 15th century, possibly 16th. I haven't done my homework. However, the eagle-eyed of you may have noticed that this actually appears in the TV series Outlander and it has cropped up in a few other films as well. Ooh, tight squeeze. Hey, finally some steps. This is the first time in the whole, the whole trail. Now where we go? I think we're going along. Uh, we are now on the final stretch to South Queens Ferry, so maybe about four miles left. It's um, it's not even 12 yet, so that's only been about four and a half hours. The estimate for this walk was about six. I actually thought I'd do it in less because I'm such a fast walker, but I have spent a lot of time just stopping and filming and taking in the scenery. So uh, yeah, so six seems about right for anyone who's planning on doing this walk. Those steps back at the castle were somewhat refreshing and what's been an otherwise relatively flat walk. Um, but it looks like it's going to be more of just level, level ground. Surprising, this is Scotland after all, but hey, there you go. So uh, I would definitely say this is a moderately easy walk for anyone just looking for uh, an afternoon to kill and they don't want to do anything too strenuous. There's a nice little symmetry with, with this section of the John Muir Way actually because you pretty much, after you leave Linlithgow, you're in the woodland area for a considerable amount of time before you hit the coast and you're walking along the Firth of Forth. And then that gradually brings you back into the woodland again where you spend more considerable time, which isn't a bad thing at all, and before that leads you out into South Queen's Ferry. So it's a nice little balance. I do believe we are on the home stretch now. I might take a little break and have a sit down on this uh, wall and do not fall off into the stream. Right. right, well fortunately it's the 17th, but I did have to double check my dates just then. Okay, so we're now moving on to the Hopetown Estate.
Right, so we're further in onto the Hope Town Estate now. I got lucky with my weekends because next weekend it's actually closed off, so I'm not aware of what the diversions would be. Uh, so this is uh, this is quite open. It looks like they're setting up ahead of next weekend anyway. All right, leaving the estate. Well, you know, it turns out we hadn't left the Hope Town Estate after all. And there is the triple threat. So that's the Queens Ferry Crossing, the Fourth Road Bridge, and the Fourth Rail Bridge. This heat is proving to be quite punishing now. There, there's no breeze anymore. It's just uh, intense heat. So I'm actually glad that the journey's now winding down. I'm also very glad that I started the journey early this morning. We begin to pass under the first of the bridges coming to an end at South Queen's Ferry. I'm standing under a tree to get some shade but there we have it South Queen's Ferry so that's 15 miles it's just gone half past one so that's five and a half hours so I'm really happy with that. Uh, lovely place full of people so it's a bit jarring when you spent all morning walking along a quiet trail so I just kind of filmed a few things and then quickly left. So I'm heading to the train station to head back home to Edinburgh. I hope you've enjoyed this journey. Have you walked this trail before? If so, let me know in the comments below anything you liked about it, anything you, you didn't like about it. And there's a lot of films coming up very, very soon. Great Glenway in one and a half weeks time. So look forward to that. And I will catch you next time.